I'm, I'm dying. Um, and I don't know how long that process will be, and I don't know how long, what I'll be like at the end of it. I don't know what the end of my life will be like. But I've nearly got to 80. I mean, I have to start looking at the end of life anyway. Denial is, is, a, is a bit silly. Um, I've modified the way I get around. I've modified my car. So all of that is saying, I'm not denying, I'm adapting. But by nature, I tend to look for the positive. And it works well for me without being a blanket denial of my situation. I do have down days. For instance, when I wake up in the morning, I'm really comfortable in bed and there's a bit of a reluctance to get out of bed because I know that when I get up, I'm going to have to face the fact that walking is difficult and that I've got to be really careful. So I'm not, I'm not denying it, but I really, I really prefer to be, to be positive if I can. All of this is, is brand new to me and it seemed that every time I opened a letter it was either from Bethlehem or it was from local access or my health care or whatever and it seemed that my life was being subsumed into this, this motor neurone disease. And when I looked at my filing cabinet, goodness me, the, the, the files, the first one was motor neurone disease, then there was unpaid bills, then there was bank. I thought, this is, this is a representation of my life at the moment, it's going to change. So I put motor neurone disease back behind the folder for theatre going and for concert goings. I mean, unmade's got, unpaid's got to be there somewhere, but I thought, no, I'm going to put motor neurone disease back there because I don't want it front centre. I don't want to ignore it, it's there, and I need to be in and out of it uh, reasonably frequently, but I don't want it there in, in my face. If conversation is very important to you, yep. what's, going to, what, what's going to happen when you can no longer talk? That is going to be a huge thing that I will have to deal with. I know, I know that's where I'm going. Um, that will be difficult. I'm not too sure how that's going to work. See, I love language, and the finesse of language is really important to me, and that's going to be missing in a communication aid. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that. That's going to be very difficult. You can't contribute, you can't direct. You can't communicate, only in lumps of happy, sad, whatever. I'm not, I'm not frightened of it, but it's, it's going to be n n very unpleasant and very frustrating. Is that your biggest thing that you're dreading? Yeah, most probably. Yeah. Yeah. Some would say your approach to life doesn't allow the people around you to grieve or feel, or feel sadness about what they're watching. Well, that's tough luck, really, isn't it? Um, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to sit in the corner and weep just so that everyone else feels comfortable to weep. I will tell people if I'm having a down day, but I'm not going to pretend to be struggling just so everyone can vent their, their grief. I've had very, two very dear friends. They've said to me, I'm going to miss you. And that's, that is a, a statement of you are very precious to me and I'm going to miss you, but I'm going to enjoy what I've got until you're not here. <gasps> grief... <laughs> Yes, to a certain extent. It's more disappointment, I think, that I'm not going to see my two youngest grandchildren reach uh, their 20s. I won't see them uh, as adults, really. Now, that, 
that is something that I faced anyway because I'm nearly 80, that was going to happen anyway. So the fact that I'm not going to be around to dictate and control is something of a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> but it was going to happen anyway. Yeah. It's just a little bit sooner than I had. I had planned to march into my 90s and be an absolute nuisance for everyone. Well, I'll just have to concentrate being a nuisance before, before, well before 90. But I don't, I don't think I grieve. But disappointment and knowing that I'm going to miss people, that I'm going to miss those things is, is a source of some sadness. Mm. Mm. I'm hanging on. As I deteriorate, life becomes more precious, actually. And so I'm shifting the goalposts. And, and that's okay. Goalposts should be shifted, as far as I'm concerned. I spend some time weeping, but not a whole lot. I'm a sunny soul, uh, very even-tempered. But I have flashes of absolute animal fury. And I don't know, I'm not raging at the universe or at God or whoever. I'm just raging because I'm frustrated. I can't move, I can't do what I want to do. It's hard enough having motor neuron disease, but if I want to carry around a bag of anger with me, I don't know how much time I've got left, but I don't want it to be filled with, uh, with fury and anger. There's too much to enjoy, I think. No, I know. It is, it's way too much for me to enjoy. So I get angry from time to time and then it's gone. And I'm okay with that because it's a very frustrating process. I worry about falling. Um, because I could injure myself. I worry about injuring myself and breaking a hip, for instance, and ending up in hospital. But that's a worry, not a fear. Last week, it's been a day when minor things have happened, like the socks didn't go on as quickly as I wanted, the shoe wouldn't go on as quickly as I wanted. So by five o'clock, I'm fairly edgy and the daughter's coming and I decide I will come up into the family room and my foot got stuck on the step and I, I did my block so I decided in a rage that I rattled my walker and I ended up on the floor didn't I now I was very lucky that I didn't injure myself so I rang my daughter and said I've fallen are you bleeding? No. Do you have any broken limbs? No. What I'm doing is playing with my phone till you get here. So they did get here and they hauled me up. And I was very lucky. I could have split my head open. Rule one, do not get cross with your walker. It's your friend. Are you thinking um, further down the line about hospital beds and things like that and yep. where you'd put them and yep. how does that feel having to think about Horrible. that? Horrible. Yeah, when I was at Bethlehem last time, she was talking about the electric bed that would sit me up. I know I'm going there, but that'll do for the moment. I'll, I'll deal with the ramp first. I know, theoretically, I know where I'm going. Um, But I'll just leave it in the future for the moment. I don't think that's putting my head in the sand. I think it's just coping. It's motor neurone disease has taken over my life. I spend a lot of time talking to OTs and physios and neurologists and talking about equipment and this, that and the other thing. And from time to time I think, I want to, I want to forget that. I want to do something that's normal. I don't intend to change my approach 
to the way I'm dealing with this. It's, it's, it's not me. Um, I'm still, I'm still an, uh, an optimist, really, and there are things to enjoy. So I don't intend to pick, to, to change and become an angry, bitter, frustrated, fist-shaking person. I'm not going to do, it's not me. So I'm just dealing with this day by day, really. Uh, it's not why me, it's why not me. And I find that helpful and I think it encapsulates really, um, there's, no, there's no sense of justice denied, it just is. And I've, now my job is to deal with it. My friend in Adelaide uh, said to me, I'm praying for you and I think that's, I'm not, I'm not a Christian, but um, the fact that she's praying for me to have the grace to deal with this is really affirming and that's the sort of comment that I, I appreciate. When we first started filming, um, you, you were saying how one of your biggest fears, even more than dying, was losing your speech. Yeah. So how is it emotionally impacting? Oh, it's a huge impact, especially when I'm misunderstood and I can't get my mouth around the word I want to say. I don't like the sound of my voice. It sounds like a drone, and I, I think I, I sound a bit like a silly person. I know I'm not, but the character has gone out of my voice. And I don't like it. When you've been on your own, um, have there been moments of incredible anger and how oh, have yes. they played out? Yes, they, I have. I'm a very happy soul, but when I do, I have these flashes of utter frustration, pure rage, and it's up to do with the inability to do things like turn over in bed. You know, I get my feet all tangled up in the sheets. I can't turn over and I get absolutely full of rage. I do have down days. I had a beautiful day a couple of weeks ago. I spent the whole day wallowing around in self-pity. I spread it everywhere, and, th and then this friend came in and talked about gold, and it wasn't lift itself up, there are people worse off, but it was a reminder that there is joy.